So it's been a great informative morning so far. Dr. You know, Dr. Clapp, I kept waiting for the baby cow, the baby cow story, the baby cow story. It's like, finally, it's like, oh yes, he did the baby cow story. Um, because I actually had a, I had a patient that I used his quote on that a year later came up to me at, a, at another talk and said, you know, it was that baby cow thing that got me to, to, to cross over. So, um, you yeah, know, I thank him. And then, you know, it's nothing better than to have a professor and a teacher uh, and a, to, to help us along the way. So uh, it's, it's been great. Akia may you live to be 100, but you know what? I'd rather you live to be 100 well. So I'm going to talk to you today about people that live to be 100 well and what they have in common with us. The big picture for today, you know, plant-based nutrition, plant-based eating is medicine. Um, and, you know, you can reap the benefits from any age. Uh, you're not too young, whether you're a child. Uh, learning to develop their taste buds or someone that's eight years old trying to improve their golf game and get rid of their aches and pains. Uh, we can all benefit from this and we can all benefit and it's always a journey. Um, you know, we start out in different places and we progress at different rates, but you know, it, it's up to us. And what we want to do today is to empower you to, to realize that, you know, your health is in your control and your choices are your control and you could actually live well to be a hundred. This is one reason why you won't hear this in your doctor's office a lot. These, this is actually a cancer surgeon and an, and an internist. And so, you know, that's the problem because we doctors are unfortunately are human and one, we don't get sick, so we don't have to worry about eating sausage. Uh, and the other thing is that we don't like to hear a lot of bad things about our bad habits either. So, you know, if I'm not going to tell you, then, you know, it, it, it kind of works its way around. You saw this slide earlier, and what I like to, to, uh, to focus on is, yes, in the three years, this got better, this big artery. But what happens to make people get better right away are these little arteries. Because just in a matter of three or four weeks after starting to eat, these nitrogen oxide, uh, not nitrogen oxide producing foods, kale, Swiss chard, spinach, broccoli, cabbage, the tiny little blood vessels start to open up and you start to feed all of your body with these tiny little blood vessels. <coughs> and so, the, so you feed more oxygen to your body and chest pain goes away. This is actually a patient of mine and this is a stress test. And if you've, uh, you know, you've had a stress test with me, you walk on a treadmill, we take pictures before and after. This particular gentleman was uh, 82 years old at the time that uh, we started these two stress tests. He'd been a patient of mine for 10 years. Uh, we had a he'd had a bypass about five or six years into uh, being a patient of mine. That was before I was plant-based. Um, and I kind of lost him to follow up. He moved away and he, and he came back and he came back and he was having chest pain. And before he was walking a couple miles a day, but he came to me uh, in actually heart failure, so his legs were all swollen, he was short of breath. And now he can only walk, uh, you know, 25 yards, uh, you know, to, into Walmart without, before he would start getting short of breath and chest pain. So his daughters, and, and we and was, were, were with him, and we had a talk, and he and his daughters actually took my nutrition class together and the daughters that were out of state, they shared Prevent and Reverse Heart Disease cookbook and, and the book. They lost weight, he, started, he became plant-based and so these are his pictures before and after. So if you look up here, this blue part is where the blood wasn't perfusing in the tip of his heart. You can see it gets better here. Again, the tip of the heart starts to get better here versus here, the, the, it starts to get better. And if you look at this, this part of his heart, actually the bypass grafts were blocked off. So even though the bypass grafts were blocked off, just by changing the way he eats, he improved his stress test. And he obviously improved his symptoms. So he went from walking 25 yards to back to walking three miles a day. And his, the side effect was his daughters lost 30 or 40 pounds apiece. He lost 30 or 40 pounds. Cholesterol normalized, off blood pressure, off cholesterol medicine, and everybody's happy. I envy Dr. Clapper 
in, in, the, in the stage of his career where he is at an institution where people come to him and they really want to change and they're ready to do it. Oftentimes, and some of you are in this room, come to me, and the last thing you want to do is hear about nutrition or how you should have to change. And some, sometimes you'll actually even hear me hit below the belt. And I go right to the source with some of my male patients. And, and I can get your attention a little bit better sometimes. <laughs> but this was a study done by Dean Ornish, uh, looking at uh, men with prostate cancer, early prostate cancer um, that had metastasized. And they, he put them on a plant-based diet, the intervention group, and the other group that he didn't put on a uh, just regular go about your business. And the people that were on a plant-based diet actually dropped their PSA. And those biopsy cells that they took and they actually exposed, they actually decreased <coughs> as far as their virulence. So the cancer cells decreased in growth in a Petri dish, the PSA decreased, and they didn't have to have intervention. The good, the bad, not so ugly. You know, as Dr. Clapper pointed out, we're learning more and more about our gut microbes. We have a lot of bacteria and a lot of DNA from our, from our bacteria <laughs> in our gut. And they can be good and they can be bad. And they're fed by what we eat. So if you eat the burger, you're gonna select for a bacteria that's more of a decaying type of bacteria. And if you eat the plant high fiber bacteria, you're going to select for a bacteria that's more beneficial. And what happens is that if you have this bad bacteria, you start, they actually will feed back and send hormones back that will help you actually extract more calories from your food so you can actually get more, gain more weight from bad food by having bad bacteria. They, they jump on the bandwagon to extract calories from food. They also feed back and actually stimulate your liver to produce glucose and cholesterol and actually can help your cholesterol get worse and help your diabetes get worse. And even the, even the people that go about eating the, um, you know, I just diet coke with the aspartamine and all this, the artificial sweeteners, those can interfere with those bad bacteria as well and cause you to extract more calories and actually decrease the production of leptin, which is the, is the hormone that makes you feel full. So the result of having bad gut bacteria can be more calories extracted from your food. You're still hungry, so you eat more of the bad food. You gain more weight and it becomes a vicious cycle. The other thing that happens are the endotoxins. So we know that bacteria have, they produce a, a chemical uh, that we call endotoxins. And you know, people actually will go to the hospital if they have a lot of poisons and they actually get septicemia from these, some bacteria that you know, are harmful. But regular bacteria that are hooked onto animal flesh, when, they're, when, they're cooked, when you cook the meat, it doesn't get rid of these endotoxins. They're still in your bloodstream and you absorb them. And they cause inflammation throughout your body and they cause inflammation in your brain, in your joints, in your heart. So it can lead to things like depression, multiple sclerosis, dementia, heart disease, joint pain, on and on. So again, the more what we eat nourishes either good bacteria or it will nourish bad bacteria. So it's, you know, when we talk about the moderation thing or I only cheat once in a while or I only do this once in a while, Again, we're nourishing our body every time we eat, but we're also nourishing these bacteria that are far more, you know, there's, there's far more of them. The age old question, where do I get my protein? I always tell my students, ask, where do you get your fiber? Because fiber is what we're actually deficient in. In countries that don't have GI cancers and diverticulosis and, and, and gallbladder disease, they eat upwards of 70 grams of fiber today. A lot of you eat more fiber today than you have in the last week, perhaps. <laughs> but that fiber actually feeds the good, that good gut bacteria. And just like if you have a garden and you plant seeds, you know, we started gardening a couple years ago, so we threw out a bunch of seeds in the dirt and waited for something to happen and nothing happened. And then we realized that we had to get better dirt and better soil and uh, some organic fertilizer to help things along. So it's like that with our bodies. We need to fertilize our good gut bacteria so they grow and to help us to decrease the inflammation and to become healthier. This is our garden. So it actually is growing this year. We have some 
uh, Brussels sprouts and tomatoes and things. So we've had a lot of fun. The other option is a tower garden, which you can put on your porch. It's a little bit simpler, and it doesn't require quite as many trips to Home Depot as we do. <laughs> so I don't know, how many of you have read the, the book, The Blue Zones? It's a fantastic book if you haven't, haven't read it by Dan Buettner. The name The Blue Zones actually was coined when they were looking at parts of the world that had the most people living to be 100, and then looking at looking at those who lived to be 100 and actually did well. So Dan Buettner uh, worked for National Geographic and they went and they looked, and you just can't say, you know, like how many are, how many of you are 100? Because people actually, you know, when you get that old, you forget, actually when you get about 50, you start to forget how old you are. Um, <laughs> rightly so. Sometimes you try to make other people older than you. That's even better. Um, but, so they looked at birth records, which were fairly accurate, and then they also looked at the death records. And so they identified areas in the world uh, where the people, they had the most people living uh, to be 100. And actually, these five zones, 30 times more people in these areas live to be 100 than in the United States, which is incredible. So Loma Linda, yeah, and Loma Linda is in California, it happens to be in the United States. Uh, some people think California is not in the United States, but you know. Um, but uh, Loma Linda, was, yeah, Loma Linda made it, so yeah, it, it was it was neck and neck between that and West Virginia. Um, <laughs> West by God, Virginia, anyway. Um, you know, people think the the Greeks lived to be lived to be the longest, but it's actually the the the, play, the uh, island of Ikaria. Any Greeks in the audience? No Greeks in the audience. I had a patient, thank God, last week that was Greek, and she told me how to say, Ikaria. Um, and then the Costa Rican uh, Peninsula, and the Coya Peninsula, and Sardinia, which is an island off of Italy, and Okinawa. What do they eat? Guess what? Beans. Beans, rice, corn, vegetables, fresh ones come out of their garden. Whatever they can grow is what they eat, and fruit, and plenty of it. Your friends ask you, what are you going to eat? You know, and everybody's so worried about variety with a plant-based diet. And the reality of it, there's so many more vegetables and fruits than there are meats that we eat, you know? Haven't anybody seen elephant meat at the Publix? No. <laughs> Thank God. So these blue zones, so Ikaria, it's very mountainous. And they have a very, very high antioxidant intake. And one of their favorite dishes is beans, black-eyed peas, <coughs> tomato, fennel. And actually, tomatoes, when we were talking earlier, when Tim Marie was talking, actually, tomatoes cooked have a little bit more nutrient release than not, the leucopene in, in, the, in the tomatoes. But fennel, um, garlic, and they use a little olive oil. But they don't use the <laughs> olive oil like, you know, we do with the drizzling on, you know, on everything. And... Uh, how much of it we can put on. It's, it's you know, they, a tiny, tiny jar that lasts them, you know, the year. They drink teas with these, guess what, plants, oregano, rosemary, sage. And they eat six times the amount of beans that we do in the United States. So again, the fiber content. <coughs> Seventh-day Adventist. This is an interesting quote from a familiar source. You don't hear about this in the Baptist Sunday chicken dinner for some reason. We don't seem to talk about the vegetables. But anyway, that is the premise where the Loma Linda Seventh-day Adventists uh, are pr primarily vegetarian. The Korea Peninsula, so in Costa Rica, there's actually a very high incidence of stomach cancer. But they noticed that in the Nicoya Peninsula part, there wasn't any stomach cancer. And it comes down to a high intake of vitamin C and beta carotene that comes from the orange things, the oranges and the pineapple and the pineapple and the papaya and the carrots that grow in their backyard. Some people say, well, how about we just take a bunch of vitamin C or we just take a bunch of B vitamins and we'll be okay. Doesn't work. Because as Dr. Colin Campbell will say, there's a symphony that goes on in our bodies that interact with all these different chemical pathways. And so just taking a bunch of vitamin C and throwing it into the symphony messes up the whole thing. We need the fiber, the combination of beta carotens to make it work. So eat the whole food. And it's even better if it's in the backyard. The other thing is Nicoya Peninsula, corn tortillas, again with lime. Lime actually causes the um, increased calcium absorption. 
So again, just like the lemon that Tim Marie was talking about as far as anti-cancer, the combination of foods helped extract more nutrients. Beans and greens. And then a backyard garden. Right after World War II, it was encouraged that everybody in the United States have a victory garden. Anybody in the room have a victory garden? Do their parents have a victory garden? Yes. So we grew things in their backyard. I grew up with my grandmother had a garden and my father had a garden. You know, we've lost sight of that. There's our backyard papaya tree and a uh, black sapota tree, some lemongrass. <coughs> Sardinia, Italy, Paisans, where women are strong and family comes first and health springs from rugged hills. <laughs> that's little Vanna. <laughs> that's my mother who's a Grand Warriors fan. And that's my little son-in-law who's a strength and conditioning coach at 200 pounds. They can uh, deadlift somewhere around four or five, four or something, 5'10". He deadlifts 510 pounds eating plants, no less. Now, my mother, she can deadlift 200. So. <laughs> Hard work, you know? So these people aren't afraid to work. Even at their age, you know, they have their garden, they're walking to places. Most of these countries are in mountainous regions. Most of these areas are actually the mountainous region of the island. So they're walking up the hills day, you know, day in and day out. In Sardinia, again, fava beans, um, tomatoes, eggplant, potatoes, zucchini. Everybody's afraid of potatoes. Please don't be afraid of potatoes. There, there's, a, there's a guy that just finished a year eating nothing but potatoes. His blood work was stellar. No nutritional deficiencies. If we put you in a room with hamburgers for a year, you would not make it. But there's vitamin C in potatoes, there's potassium in potatoes, there's plenty of protein, so don't worry about eating potatoes. Red's a tricky subject, especially in America. You know, we uh, even, you know, we'll say a whole grain bread, which is Tip most of the time not whole grain bed, but it's milled down into, you know, we just mill the stuff down so it tastes great and put a bunch of chemicals in so it's soft. Uh, but they're bread made with barley and bran flour, so it was very, very hearty. Lunch could be just bread, fennel, and onion. Again, the onions, the antioxidants. So, you know, these people were doing this for a year and they, they didn't have to watch for seven hours or anything. It's amazing. <laughs> Thank God I found this part. <laughs> <laughs> My patients will ask me, you know, after I preach and preach and preach and they're dying from everything, you know, hearing enough about kale and kale, it's like, well, what about, you know, a little alcohol doc? And it's like, listen, I'm Irish and Italian. What do you think? <laughs> <laughs> but it turns out that it's true that the Sardinian Carnal wine is actually a Grenache. And so we have Grenache. Everybody's going to buy. I should call. I am not sponsored by the ABC store, but they do have Grenache. Um, but, plant, but actually, a little bit of wine can help you actually inc absorb the flavonoids and the antioxidants. Now, I'm not saying to go out and drink a gallon of wine tonight, but I'm just saying a little, you know, there is a little antioxidants there. The same thing with Icaria, uh, premium wine. Interesting, premium wine is uh, grapes that are left on the vine for a long time. So they've been out in the sun. Uh, they're very rich, they're very dark and purple, again, color, and they're very sweet, and so, again, a lot of antioxidants. So, again, besides the wine, when you're looking for things, the purple, the deeper color, the better. Again, mountainous regions, walking up hills, gardening all day, the Sardinian shepherds walking at least five miles a day. You know, we've dumbed it down here in this country. And, and, and even if you ask the researchers that write the American Heart Association papers and the exercise papers, they'll say, yeah, yeah, we know we, we could, they should do more, but you know, if we, if we tell people to walk two hours a day, they, they won't walk any. So we'll dumb it down. And somehow it's got watered down that you can walk, you know, 30 minutes with your Fitbit intermittently three times a week and it'll be okay. Not so. We need to move our body. And you need to move your body daily. And there's an ultra runner that actually was one of the first guys, it's called Western States Ultra. And it, this was a race that um, it was a 100 mile race that was on horseback. And his horse went lame. And so he finished the race on foot. 
And so I said, you know what, it'd be cool if we actually did this, we had an entry that people could just run it. And then that's how we started the Western States 100 Ultra Race. You know, so, it's, so moving your body every, and so this guy is, he, he did this race well into his 70s. And he said, you know, and I said, what's the trick to your training? It's like, I try to go out just every, every day, and I actually try to get to the point like I'm huffing and puffing a little bit. You know, I want to finish huffing and puffing, get the lungs open and get moving. So there's, you know, there's nothing better than to get outside, get some air, and get your lungs, you know, open, open your lungs up and breathe a little bit. There was actually a study that sitting is lethal. Okay, everybody stand up. Stand up. You're gonna die. Okay, I saved all of you. You can sit back down now. And actually, that's not a bad exercise. So if you have a kitchen t chair that's nice and firm like that, and you stand up, sit down without using your hand about 10 times before breakfast and about 10 times before lunch, and not the flopping down, but the gravel dribble down, it's actually not bad. But anyway, so in the American Journal of Clinical Nutrition, they looked at 240,000 people, and they asked them if they watched TV and how much they watched TV, and then they asked them, actually asked them how much they sat with their job. And they found out that the TV, the TV watching activity was actually a little bit more, a uh, uh, little bit more accurate. But despite exercising vigorously seven days a week, sitting, the more you sit, the worse you do. And if you look at this curve, you'll notice that the more you sit, the worse it gets for your longevity and your heart disease. So every time you've been sitting, so if there's a commercial, get up. And better yet, you know, pick a TV show and watch it. But the, you know, the all-day marathons, yes, not probably so good. But it's good to move your body every day. How much? You know, 30 minutes is better than 15 minutes. An hour is better than 30 minutes. And we actually even know that 90 minutes is better than an hour. So the more you can move, the better. Sense of purpose. Igigi, Juan, Juan de Vida, and La, Fig and La Famiglia. So all these people had in common with the Blue Zones is a sense of purpose. And I think Tim Marie, you know, she, she really demonstrated nicely today, you know, the this, this sense of purpose that we all have. Our parents have, and grandparents have uh, made food for us, and, you know, uh, the extended family for over the years, and uh, everybody needs a sense of purpose, but you know, it, it doesn't, it's, it's different in every stage of your life, but everybody needs a sense of purpose. And actually we have three German shepherds that need a sense of purpose too. If we don't give them an hour long run for their sense of purpose in the morning, then uh, you know, you could lose a shoe or a hat, so everybody. <laughs> Dean Orish also published a study looking at telomerase activity. So we have telomeres uh, are part of our genes and they're like the end caps, which are like the little plastic caps on the end of our shoes. And as we age, those little plastic caps start to fray. And when we age, it, part of that again is what we're eating is how we age. So as those little caps start to fray because of this, enzyme, this enzyme activity, then bad things start to happen. Uh, things are exposed, hormones and, D our and DNA is turned on, and disease starts, dementia starts, cancers grow. And they looked at uh, a group of caregivers for Alzheimer's patients. And the group that were taking care of the patients or taking care of their family members, and they, and they saw it as a sense of purpose. And, and it's, a stressful, it's a stressful job, but those people that actually you know, took that caregiving responsibility on and weren't necessarily stressed out about it. It was, it was stressful, but it, you know, it was a, a sense of they wanted to do it. Did much better as far as their, their overall uh, telomere activity and their telomere enzyme, enzy enzyme activity than those that were very stressed out and, and angry and frustrated by the situation. So how we react to life's events also reflect how we age. You know, people say once your brain starts, you know, your brain starts to go, your brain shrinking, and it's, it's over. But there's good act, there's good evidence now with the plant-based nutrition, you could actually turn off some of these enzymes and actually turn on the regrowth of 
your brain cells, and particularly the hippocampus. So we know that people uh, decrease with, with plant-based nutrition, they can decrease depression, increase mood, and actually decrease some of these other post-traumatic stress. So it's, you know, sometimes people say they eat for uh, comfort, or they eat because they're stressed, or um, they need these comfort foods, you know, the Oreos and the chocolate cake. But, you know, in reality, that feeds back and actually causes more problems. And we, and we know that initially when you eat something that makes you happy, like the sugar, you'll get this big surge in dopamine. But the next time you eat it, you don't get as big a surge of dopamine. And it's just like heroin. You need more and more of it. And so it keeps feeding back, and you get stuck in this, this loop that you're eating these substances that are... They give us a false sense of pleasure, so to speak. But when we eat whole plant foods, we don't get these giant spikes. Our brains aren't full because these are nutrients that we can actually identify with. And again, these dietary polyphenols found in blueberries, the dark berries, green tea, plums, apples, <coughs> cherries, and Grenache wine, baby, uh, can help us to heal. There's a, there's a book called Living with a Seal. It's another, another book that I like. And the guy's name is David Goggins. And he's a phenomenal individual. He's, an, he's a Navy SEAL. And he has something in common with my mother. He's about, not their height, but they both say, you need to look in the mirror before you go out. My mother always said, you know, did she not look in the mirror? <laughs> or did you not look in the mirror? But, but David Goggins also said that you need to look in the mirror and assess the situation. You know, when you look in the mirror in the morning when you're brushing your teeth, are you happy with how things are going? You know, what's the plan for the day? What are we going to do right today? And what's your motivation for the day? You know, how, how would I like this to go? I, you know, I always think that I can solve most of the world's problems in the morning. It's just when you step out of the bathroom that things start to fall away a little bit. But, <laughs> and then sometimes we develop these defense mechanisms, right? You know, I was in a hurry. Uh, you know, um, I forgot my lunch. Grandkids are coming to town. So we have all these defense mechanisms that can get us off track. So we need to be prepared for them. He also has this concept of a cookie jar. Now, it's not the Oreo cookie jar, it's a different cookie jar. And this cookie jar that he has, he actually puts things that he's done right in his life. So he puts a little post-it note of things that have gone right in his life in this cookie jar and pushes it to the side. And on those really nasty days or when you're really having trouble, and maybe it's a good place to have it is in the kitchen without the Oreos in it, of course, that, uh, oops. You can reach in and grab one of those pieces of paper and look at it. So give yourself a little pat on the back of how things are going. Um, and look at your success. You know, it, it's, we don't want you to beat yourself up every day. Dr. Richard Aiken came up with an acronym, TATER. And again, potatoes are good, so taters are better. Um, it's the trigger. What happens that kind of starts us down the wrong path? We get these automatic thoughts of, oh, this is not going to work, I don't like this, whatever. We get an emotion, we get all stressed out, we get worried about things. You start down that path, so to speak, and, and the next thing you know, you're, all, you're off the plant-based nutrition way. So an idea would be, you know, one of the biggest things that when patients come to see me, you know, and I haven't seen them for a while, and all of a sudden their weight's up 10 pounds, and we were doing so good plant-based, it's like, you know, the grandkids came to town. It's always the grandkids. You know, the little, so, so I want to go through with you something that we can do to kind of change how the little grandkids, we can react to them. So if the little, so the, if the little monsters are coming over for pizza, so you say, okay, the little monsters are coming over for pizza tonight. And they're all for picky, you know, and it's just going to be a fight, and we're all going to, it's going to be, you know, it's a sort of pizza. You know, I don't want to have to deal with that. I don't want the screaming and crying. And, and after all, we want to be the favorite grandparents. You know, we don't want to get in trouble with their parents. You know how that goes. You know, two weeks we'll be fighting over this. So let's just order Domino's. Call it a day. So they order the Domino's and, you know, bad things start to happen and they eat that and they can't breathe and their ankles swell and they come and see me and I say, what do you have for dinner last night? And they said Domino's. I say, why? And they say, the grand. <laughs> you all know it because I'm asking. 
You know, the first thing that comes, you know, and, and you know what? Despite me asking that, people never prepare. I say every, you know, it's like, you know, so what did you have for dinner last night? Oh, you're not going to want to know. It's like, tell me. <laughs> so, the alternative could be, why don't we make a pizza? What? Make a pizza. Oh, yeah, yeah, we could make the dough and, you know, they could roll it out and, you know, they could play and that'll entertain them and, and we can make personal pizzas for everybody, you know? So we'll have everybody and they could do the foodie bar way mm -hmm. and they'll have their own toppings. It doesn't have to be the regular ingredients, you know? So we'll just put out a bunch of things in bowls like Tim Marie would do, you know? So we won't put cheese out, but we'll put some nutritional yeast and we'll dice up colored peppers and even pineapple and, and you know, some kale chips and some regular kale and soy curls. Anybody know what soy curls are? Mm -hmm. Any try them? So, so, yeah, so soy curls are just soybeans that have been soaked and stretched out and they taste like chicken. <laughs> <laughs> Richard should get them. They're on the, they're on the list, I'm sure. Yeah. You know, you can grill the vegetables so you grandpa can take the kids out to the grill because now that you've been here all day, you're wondering, what am I going to do with my liver? So you grill the vegetables, you grill the pizza crust. And guess what happens? You spend time with your family, not fighting. It can be great. So you're the cool grandparents, you're the cool uncle or aunt, and then someday they'll say, you know, remember back when, when we used to come over and make pizzas all the time, and you used to let me play with the dough, you used to show me how to make cookies, you know, so it, it works. And they didn't have to have their cell phones or their iPads to entertain them. You know, there wasn't any video games. You don't have to say, we're going to have vegan pizza tonight. <laughs> Just let them play. And this is what you have. And again, so we're taking responsibility, like Tim Marie would say, by having good things in our house. <coughs> if only you understood what I was thinking. <laughs> so this is Vincenzo on the right. And this is Amy on the left. Vincenzo is very much misunderstood when it comes to Amy. <laughs> You would like her to understand. So my bag of tricks, you know, be prepared. Worst thing can be if you go to the store hungry, right? And you're going to pick up everything that you can see, you know, that are bad, this bad for you. If it's not going right, keep a log. When people come to see me and things aren't going right, there's usually, it usually comes down to oil, sugar, flour products, you know, the white processed stuff. That's, that's usually where it is. But, you know, sometimes it comes to, sometimes it can be tricky. Sometimes there's a salad dressing that, you know, on the bottom looks really good, and then when you actually look at it, it's 80% fat and that you've been using. Or the crackers that you've been thinking that are, you know, um, whole wheat, and they say full of vitamins, and they have a picture of, you know, a carrot on the box, they have to be good, and, and it turns out they're 80% oil. So sometimes just keeping a log of where, what you're eating and kind of look back and say, oh, there it is. Or, or, you know, like, I rarely eat out, and then we start talking about it, and, you know, patients say, well, we don't eat out, but they get takeout, and they get pickup, and they get, you know, and so sometimes that, that couple-week log, it really starts to kick in. Make sure you eat fruit and greens every day, you know, that giant salad lunch, and fruit. Fruit will not hurt you. You know, uh, diabetics are desperately afraid of eating fruit. And actually, Dr. Greger has a great study, uh, reference to a great study, where they gave people 17, diabetic 17 pieces of fruit a day and asked them not to lose weight. Guess what? Their cholesterol went down, their diabetes, their A1C normalized. They were eating 17 pieces of fruit a day. So it's not the fruit, it's the, you know, the other things. And usually it's the salt and the other things that, that really, and the fat that, that really defray people. So make sure you're eating fruit. And it's okay to eat fruit for breakfast. If you're not hungry, I agree with Dr. Clifford, don't eat. You know, nobody's gonna starve to death by missing breakfast and wait until they're actually hungry to eat. But sometimes just eating a bowl of fruit does it and put your flax seed on it and put, you know, sprinkle it with some greens. Uh, it's, it's perfectly in some seeds. And get your fiber. You know, think about it. Have you had your fiber today? N and not the kind that you sprinkle on top of the Metamucil, that, that's not really count. You know, have you had your greens? Have you had your oatmeal? Where, where does fiber come from? Fiber only comes from plant food. So it's in your oatmeal, it's in your banana, it's in your apple, it's in your salad, it's in your pepper, it's in your beans. So another reason for the beans. So the more fiber you get in, the better things will be, and uh, then move your body. You know, it used to be, 
that you know when uh, when they had the sanatoriums, you know they they would put people. You see the pictures of the big porches, and they'd lay them out on the porch, you know, to get sun. And you know my mother's always throwing my running stuff out on the porch to get sun because it airs it out and makes it not stink. She says. <laughs> so why not air your stuff out? So you won't stink. No, why don't you just... <laughs> but airing yourself out and getting a little sun really makes a difference. I used to, when I first started running, I used to run on the treadmill all the time. Now, you know, it's like there's nothing better getting outside in the morning, watching the sun come up, uh, and, and getting some fresh air. It's the best part of the day. I come home at lunchtime and have my lunch, but we, I always take the dog out to play a little frisbee and, you know, assess the garden, pick a tomato. There's nothing that's more calming and relaxing and better for you than to get a little sunlight. Be happy. So not every day is a good one. Sometimes we just screw up. <laughs> but you know what? It, you know, it, it, it'll be okay. And and really, nothing is as good as it you know we think it's going to be, and nothing really as bad as you think it's going to be if you actually look at it. So so we can't really you know sweat the small stuff in, in a lot of ways. And, and and the reality of it is the little things that end up meaning a lot. I remember telling telling Addie one time. You know, it's, it's not what you wear to the, the seventh grade dance. It's, it's the friends that you have while you're there. And, and you'll remember that you'll have the memories of what happened at an event, but you'll not remember what you were wearing. Chances are you won't even remember what you ate, uh, but you'll have, you have a good time. And so it's, just, it's the small things. And then smile and be grateful. Tim Marie is wonderful. She, every, every, um, every email that she sends, she ends it with, with gratitude. And, and every time I read that, I smile. And, you know, so it's, it's have a little gratitude. It, it goes a long way. Again, sunshine makes everything better. That's why we're all in Florida. <laughs> and, and, and the other thing is, if, you know, if you think you're going to lose, you probably will. So, you know, it's, it, think you're going to win, and you have a better chance of winning. And you can always be in the driver's seat. <laughs> <laughs> Anybody can take a turn. <laughs> so, you know, we can achieve... Optimum health at any age, as long as we try to be as plant-based as we can, get our fiber, have a purpose, and whether you think so or not, there's somebody that, that needs you, and move your body. <laughs> little Vanna, <laughs> on the left, some my tomatoes, and my little girl. Thank you very much. Yeah.